Welcome to a brief introduction on layered materials and more precisely how layered materials can be used in a game like Power Wash Simulator. So in this video, we're just going to be covering the layered materials. So if you just want to learn about layered materials, you can just watch this and it won't impact anything else. But we're then going to be following this up with another part on making a mask that we modify in the actual game itself. So to get into it, we're just going to start with a base project in first person. This is in Unreal Engine 5.4, but I believe most of it works in anything Unreal Engine 5. So we'll just call our project Power Washing, and we will create. I'll see you once the project is ready. Okay, so just like with any project, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to make a nice folder to organize everything. So right click, new folder, and I'm going to call this Power Washing for the rest of the tutorial. You can work whatever you want. And then we're gonna need a material folder. So to keep all our stuff, we need some material in there. And finally, another one, which is going to be instances, because most of the work that we're gonna do is gonna be on the base materials. And then we're going to be applying those via the material instances. Because when working with layered materials, it's not really easy to implement a layered material in the base material itself. It's best to do it all with the instances. And I'm going to show you why once we get around to that. So the first thing we're going to need is a few materials. We're going to start with the first one, which we're going to call master material. So right click and get a material here and we'll call M master. And we're going to go ahead and do this one right away because it's literally a 10 second setup. And it's kind of the base class that we're going to use for all our instances later. So right here, we are going to have our master material. And before we go and modify this, which is our actual material, I'm going to show you where we're going to be working. So I'm going to right click on our master material here, and I'm going to make an instance. And with this instance, normally this is where all the work would happen. You'd have your different variables, your different colors, different scalar parameters, etc. In our case, this is where it's going to work. And to have this happen, to be able to access this entire system, we need to set it to know that it's using layer attributes or attribute layers. So to do that, we're going to go into our master material right here and we need to go into our details. So if you haven't got this panel, you need to click here and that will or select the material itself and that will display it. And we want to click on use material attributes. What this will do is it will compact the whole thing into the material attribute. And to make the whole thing work, we need four different nodes here that we're going to plug in. The first is going to be called material attributes layers. And this is pretty much going to get a reference to all the information that we store in here, all the layers that we add later in the instances. With this, we're then going to say get material attributes. So it's going to get all the different information because this can actually be broken down into the typical stuff. If we look here in our details, when selecting our get, we can actually expand it and select something like base color, displacement, tangent, normal, etc. So this just contains all that information. We're then going to call set material attribute and we're going to plug this into here. Now we're done with our master material. So we can apply and it won't look like much alone because we're not actually doing any parameters in here. The parameters will be in the actual layers. Currently this has no layers and that's what we're going to add in other materials. So now we can actually select a layer. So we can go and press plus, add as many layers as we want. There's one background, which is the default one that will appear below. And then you can work to add different layers, which is what we're going to do. So if we look here, we don't have any to select because we haven't made any. So we're going to go ahead and do that right now. We'll leave this here for now. We'll get back to it in a second. We don't need our master material anymore. It's not necessary. And now we're going to make our material layer. So I'm just going to grab this instance and put it in its instance where it should be in the folder. And now we're going to right click and instead of material this time, going down to the material category and we will select material layer. So we'll call this ML for material layer and we'll call it We'll call it default. And so on its own, what this will do is it will look like this. So as I mentioned previously, when we look at our set attributes here, we can actually do the same thing as with the get is we can actually select 
specific values we want to put in. Now, what we can also do is we'll leave this as it is because this will be appearing here. And so what we plug into our preview is we're going to say make material attribute. And with this, we can then now build all the different stuff you would do in a normal material into a specific layer. What we'll do just so that you see how it works, we're not actually gonna cover the entire thing. We're gonna make this very simple. We're going to make a system so that we have a master material in our default. And you can follow this pattern for everything. I'm just going to set it up for the base color. And you're free to do this for the metallic, the specular, the roughness, the normal, whatever you want. And so what we're gonna do is we're gonna set up kind of a, an organized category system to get this to work. So for our base color, we're gonna start off by getting a static switch parameter. And by default, this is gonna have an error because we have nothing plugged in. And we will call this static base color, we'll call it. And so what this does very simply is on true, we'll do one thing, on false, we'll do another. And this will be a parameter that will appear in our master instance once we use it. On true, what we're gonna do is we're gonna say, well, if it's true, we're going to use a texture. So we'll hold T to get a texture sample. We'll right click to convert it to parameter and we'll say base color. Plug this into true. And then we will also multiply this here and apply this on true. And this is so if we wanna override a color, so to speak. So if you wanna go and press four here and plug it in here, I believe that'll work. I'll just apply to check, so it's fine. And so by default, we wanna make sure that this is white so that we actually have the same color if we don't wanna use it. So we're gonna right click here and say convert to parameter as well. And we'll call it color. Now, on the other hand, if this is false, we want to just use the color. So this is if we wanna have a solid block, just one single color, we can use that pretty easily. So we will default to true. By default, we'll use a, color, a texture here and we get an error because we don't have a texture. So just select any one that comes up, absolutely fine, no problem. Now, this is just one example of what we can do and to make things more organized in our mass, in our instances, we can actually organize these. So how we're gonna do that is we're gonna start by saying the static switch. So the Boolean is always the first one. So how are we gonna do this? We're gonna call this category color, first things first, and we're gonna do the same for all of these. And we're gonna put it at zero because it's the first one we wanna place. Then for base color, and you can do this in any order, but we'll put base color is gonna be number one. Then we're gonna put it in our category for color and for linear color. We will put color as well and we'll put two. Now to show you how this looks, let's do apply and we will select our layer material, the one we just made. And if we click the little drop down here, we can see our color category and we can change how this works. Now, right now we have that and we have a static gray. If for instance, we say we just wanna use the color, that means we uncheck our static base color here and it hides the actual texture because we don't need the texture because it's not a part of this line here. So now we can change the color and it will change the material. So we can do the same trick also, let's just do it for the metallic so you can see what it looks like there because in the case of the metallic, we don't need a multiply because it is a alpha value. So we're gonna change this name to metallic. This one to well, this won't actually be a color, it will be a scalar parameter. So hold S and click. So scalar, plug this in here and by default, we'll leave it at zero. And this won't be base color anymore. It will be metallic as well. So plug this into our metallic right here and we will move this across just to organize it a bit. And now one thing to note is that currently this is still considered base color. So we want to change that to a new category we'll call metallic and we don't want it to be zero. What we'll do to keep things organized is we'll put it at 10. So we'll increment every category by 10 from the base value. So that way we always have a distance. So if we have to add a new thing, a new parameter, it's fine. It won't kind of mess up the organization. So this one then becomes 11. 
with the category changing as well. And the scalar also becomes 12 in the category as well. And we can apply that. And we will immediately see right here, we now have metallic as well. And we can control say, we don't want it to be an actual value. We just want it to be based on the scalar right here. And we'll put one. So now it's more metallic. And that is what we're looking for. So this does it for the basis of how a material layer works. Now, we're going to make a duplicate of our default here. And we're going to call this, I'm going to call it dirt, because that's what it's going to be used for. And the main difference is we want this one to specifically have a category for the opacity. So we're going to do the same thing. We're going to copy these two. Yeah, for the opacity, we'll use a scalar once again. So actually, we need to change this to scalar metallic. And we will change this to scalar opacity. And same thing for this static opacity. And this is opacity alone. So we'll plug this into our opacity here. Or you can also use opacity mask, but we'll just use opacity for this one. And same trick, we change all of these. So this now becomes 20. This is opacity, the new category. And the same thing here. This becomes 21. And the scalar becomes 22. So now we have a new system or a new material layer. And this one is specifically for dirt. And the reason we're doing it this way is because right here, we don't have a parameter for opacity because we always want to use our default as the background layer. But if we use here our new layer, we want to use this dirt. And the only thing we're missing right now is we need to type how it's supposed to blend between these two materials because right now it doesn't understand that. So we need to put something in here. Now some do exist. There are some that already exist, but we're going to make our own and it's going to be very, very simple. Let's go ahead and make that right now. So we're going to use the same location. We're going to say right click material and we're looking for material blend. So this will be MLB and we'll call this, I think we'll just call this MLB opacity or mask, I think we'll do. And the mask is going to be very, very simple. So once you open it, you'll be greeted by this. So this is our top layer, uh, bottom layer, sorry. So that means it is our background right here. And then we have our top layer right here, which is the one on top that we want to actually modify. So very simply, what we're going to do is we're going to drag these a bit further because by themselves, this pretty much does a good job. We don't want to change the A and B. We want to change the alpha. And so for the alpha, what we're going to do is we are going to use a mask, our own mask. So we're going to write or we can just press actually T. We're going to need a texture and this texture is going to be a mask, the mask that we are going to use. So we're going to say convert to parameter. And we'll call this opacity mask. Now we can use, I believe, we can use this, the default alpha texture, just to test it. And so that by default, this is what it will use. And we're going to do one minus. Now, the one minus is just mainly for us in the second part. It doesn't really change anything. It just kind of inverts the colors. It's not really necessary. But before we plug it into the alpha, we want to get our top layer. And the reason we made our dirt separate is because now we're going to say get material attributes. Once we have our material attributes selected, we want to go to the plus in the details and change that to opacity. And we're going to multiply it by this alpha mask or this opacity mask. That way we have a nice mix between the mask that we want to split these two. So for instance, in this case, you could use a mask that would stop it over a certain height that works exactly for for instance if you want to do a grunge pattern on the floor that appears slightly on the items on the ground then you want to do this into the alpha so that's the whole point of this then we want to call apply our we can close our material layer blend we don't need it anymore we don't need our dirt anymore either we'll just keep it open so we can come back to reference it if we need so now we have everything. Now, the advantage of our layers is we can actually open it and still make changes in here if we need to. So right now, it's a bit difficult to tell because everything is kind of using the same. So what we're going to do is we're going to make our base layer. So below is now red. 
but we don't see any red. So now let's add our blend asset right here. And we're looking for MLB mask. And now if we select that, it's going to load. And now we have an actual difference because now it realizes that, well, this is the mask we're using. We're using that specific texture that we mentioned here. And it's actually cutting it in that same shape. So let's just make it look, there we go. So now it's visible. Now, the reason this is looking kind of gray and not actually completely transparent, even though this is black and white, is because our opacity uses this. So let's uncheck that and we can put it to, I believe, one here. And now it looks normal. Now we have our white for this one. We can actually change that if we want. We can change the static to a base color as well. So we can say blue. Now it's blue instead, any color we want. And this works just like this. Now, and you can keep adding as many of these as you want. Like you can add as many other layers as you want. Now, obviously in our case, it's not gonna work too well because we have the same opacity texture. So here, for instance, I just went and added a second layer, which uses a different mask. It's not perfect, a perfect example, but we can see that the blue here is changing our red to purple. So just to check without one material, you can just click the visibility here. So we have a red, but we get like this kind of scale going down with the blue as well, due to the different actual mask we used right here. So this is what happens when you layer multiple materials on top of each other. And I believe that covers most of what we can actually do with the material layers. Now, this is just an introduction. I'm sure there are people who have gone more in depth, but this is all we need to actually get into making the power wash simulator and actually cleaning the tiles with this system. Pretty much, we're just going to be going through our opacity mask here and just turning it from black to white. And that way, all of a sudden, well, this will become the other material below it. So that's how we're going to use this. And I hope to see you in the next part. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.